Welcome back to Edmund State Dynasty. In today's episode, we will be looking to finish off the rest of Season 1 here. We have four games remaining on the schedule. In order to make a bowl game, we need to win three of the final four. I really don't see it happening, but if we can pull it off, that would obviously be amazing. Just a quick update on our recruiting board. We do already have five guys committed, but I do think we're going to get left tackle Oscar Almodovar this week, a three-star gem at left tackle. And then I think we could also end up landing running back Skylar Lewis because he is also pretty close to committing. As far as I am aware, there is still the glitch about the scoreboard disappearing. I know there are a couple workarounds, but none of them really work with play the moment, which is how I play this series. So that is really unfortunate, but we may have to deal with it the rest of this season. That's going to bring up a second and six now. Hopefully we can get a stop here. They are back in a shotgun set. I am going to be controlling Worthy. And I got off the block, kind of, but we do manage to actually get the stop this time. That's a loss of one. Now on a third and seven, we could hold them to a field goal try here. We're going to come off the edge. He's under pressure. Gets rid of it to the end zone, and that one is knocked away. That was deflected by number 32, which is Antoine Copper. But now they come out with for a field goal try. The kick is away, and they take a 3-0 lead. It does let us jump in on our first drive of the game, but it is a third and four here. So out of a shotgun set, Snyder will drop back to pass, and we'll take this easy throw for the easy conversion to Ty Mays, who's going to go up the middle all the way down to the 26. It would go back to simulating after that, though, and a couple of plays later, it's a third and seven. So out of shotgun, we're going to give this one to Turner, and I was really hoping that blocking could set up, but it sets up a fourth and five. Now we should be able to kick a field goal and tie this one up, as long as I don't completely shank this field goal which I feel like is very much possible. That may be too far to the right. Never mind. The kick is good. The next time we get to jump back in, it's a third and seven. We are still tied at three here in the second quarter. Driving back to pass, and we're going to try to force this one over the middle, and that was just a really, really bad decision. Please don't turn into a pick six. Turner, I'm going to need you to catch him down the sideline, and he does manage to get him at least out of bounds. Now it's letting us jump in on a big third down here, a third and six from R35, a possible three and out for them. They're going to drop back, and he's going to go deep downfield, and that should have really been intercepted. All right, well, as we jump back in, there is something real quick to notice here. Cole Snyder is not in at quarterback. Jason Queen is in at quarterback here for this third and three. So we'll have to check on our starter in Snyder, but Queen will drop back to pass. We'll take a quick throw, caught by the tight end, and keep this drive alive. It does not appear that Cole Snyder is too injured. It is a shoulder strain for the next two quarters. Uh, but apparently Donatello Schreeder, our starting safety, is going to be out a couple weeks. Didn't know that one. But it does look like quarterback Jason Queen has gotten us inside the red zone now. So a first and 10 from the 13-yard line. We'll run the RPO with Dylan Turner and get a gain of a couple yards. That's going to set up a second and eight. Queen will drop back to pass this time. And we'll take this underneath throw again. This one caught by Hart. That will set up a third and two from the five. I'll tell you right now, Jason Queen does not have great ratings, which is why I'm taking quick and easy throws. But on third and two, he'll drop back, and we should be able to find this man for the first down. No, Hart can't hold on through the hit, but it wants us to go for it. You know what? Why not? Let's get aggressive here. We are going to run this jet toss, and hopefully it works out. Hart is in at receiver, so we're going to send him in motion. That's who we toss to, and he gets blown up in the backfield because we can't hold a block to save our lives. Later on, it's a third and 14 with about a minute 20 to go here in the half as we get to jump back in on UTEP's drive now. He will drop back and look to pass. He has all the time in the world. We finally get some pressure on him, and we'll get him for the sack. All right, you cannot hold on to the ball that long against any team. But they do want us to jump in for a two-minute drill, even though we only have 53 seconds. But out of a shotgun set, Queen will drop back to pass, and we'll take this throw to Hart on the outside, who will make the catch up the sideline, get forced out of the 41. We come back in a shotgun set again. He'll drop back and look to pass. Not seeing anyone come open, and we're getting sacked on the play. Now a second and 19. Back in shotgun again. We'll drop back. And we are going to go to Hart, but that's in the red. And what the hell just happened? The defender missed it. The receiver never turned around, and it just falls incomplete? All right. Well, I am not going to go out on this drive without trying to get the first down here. So on third and 19, we'll drop back to the pass. Go downfield, and once again, just bounces off Hart. All right, so if you put it in red, your receiver can just, like, not acknowledge that the ball was thrown. That's cool. Jumping into the second half, it is still going to be 3-3 three to three here as we get to come in on a third and five. They'll be in a shotgun set, letting the clock run down a bit, apparently. And now he's going to be under pressure, and we get the hit, but he will not be able to find his man. All right, so it found the receiver, but he could not hold on to it, and they should punt this one away. 
However, that really ultimately did not matter because they got the ball back and now it's a first and 10 from our 18. So they are inside the red zone, which is why it has let me jump in. Hand off to the back who runs over Dell Slade for just a two yard gain. Actually, I don't even think that was Slade. I think that was Warren Middlebrooks, like our best defensive player. All right, a second and eight now, and the scoreboard is going to disappear because they decided to do something, but now it's a handoff to the running back who goes to the outside, has the blocking, and the first down all the way down to the four-yard line. Okay, guys, let's get a stop and force a field goal. Keep it a three-point game this time. First and goal from the four. He sends a man in motion, and it's going to be a read option to the outside, and there is nobody there. Touchdown, UTEP. The next scenario we get is a third and nine. UTEP has the ball still up by seven. From our 41 yard line, it's a handoff to the running back and he will not get to the marker. But on fourth and three, what will they do? I guess they would just punt it away, but now we need to get another stop. Our offense is apparently going to be non existent today. Third and eight from the 50 yard line. He'll come out with a draw play right at the middle that we were not ready for at all. That would later lead to a third and seven. They go back to the back again, but this time we will actually get the stop to bring up a fourth down. They would kick a field goal in simulation, so they make it 13 to three. Now we have a fourth and two. We are gonna try this jet toss. It did not work earlier, but it will work here for the first down and Hart will keep the drive moving. It lets us come back in for a third and six right before the two minute warning. Snyder is gonna drop back to pass and we got a man open deep down the left side. Can he get there in time? It is knocked away. So that brings up a fourth and six with a minute 57 to go to try to keep this drive moving. Take the quick throw, and why not another interception today? And UTEP is going to have a decent return here all the way to the 35. That should seal this game away. Unfortunately, this was a pretty ugly game for the offense. I did not play well, tried to force a couple passes. I believe in total, Colt Snyder ends with three interceptions today because I think he had one in simulation if I saw that right. It was really just not a pretty day at all. I'm a little shocked we got no commits after that game. I know we lost. But Almaldivar, or however you say his name, is now a little bit closer. What about that running back? Skyler Lewis, also a little bit closer. I only have 10 hours into him. Maybe that's why, but no one else is really going after him. But I do think I'm going to have to drop out on right tackle Elijah McGough because now Clemson's in the race, and I don't think I can beat them. So we will see if those recruits finally commit after this game. But next up, we get the Sam Houston Bearcats. And now we're in a scenario where to become bowl eligible, we have to win the last three games of the season. The first scenario we get is not a great one. A first and goal from the three tied at zero. They give it to the back who goes up the middle and into the end zone. It does not allow us to jump in on offense this time. We go right back to defense facing a third and eight. And that is going to be a flag. Is that really going to be called on us? Yes, it is. Instead of a third and eight, they now get to face a third and three. So he's back in shotgun. We'll drop back to pass. A quick throw downfield will be deflected away by Russell Westbrook. So we should at least get the ball back here. Uh, apparently, they're going to go for it on fourth down. So we'll, uh, I guess, jump back in and see exactly what's going on there. So we'll line up and see if we can get a stop here. We are going to be bringing a blitz, and I'm going to really hope it does not backfire. But it probably will. So they'll drop back. A quick throw to the outside and right at his receiver's feet. And Colt Snyder and the offense respond by driving down inside the 20, which means we get to jump in. Hand off to Troy Walker, our backup running back, who starts today with a nine-yard carry. Second and one near the end of the first quarter. We are going to send Mays in motion and run a toss out to him. We'll cut up the middle, have the first down, and get met and brought down to the four. But it does set up a first and goal as we go to the second quarter. Snyder back in a shotgun set for a first and goal. He'll drop back, and we're going to lob this to the end zone and a touchdown for Edmund State. But there is a flag, and is this coming back? Yes, it is. Well, that absolutely sucks. Now a first and goal from the 14. We'll drop back to pass, and we're going to try to force this to the end zone, and it's caught by Dominique Speed. Touchdown, Edmund State, anyway. The next scenario we get, we are still tied at seven. We get to jump in on a third and six, and looks to pass. We're going to go deep down, fit that's into double coverage, and luckily it just falls incomplete. I should have taken a short throw and just took the first down. I thought I could get a big play there. Obviously not a great situation, or at least not a great call from me. So we'll just go ahead and line up for the field goal to try to take a three-point lead. This kick is away, and it should be good. Sam Houston is facing a third and five on their next possession from our 38-yard line. He'll drop back and look to pass here, and he's run out of time, and we don't make that sack somehow. Awesome. He breaks the tackle and gets the first all the way to the 26. We now get the jump back in. It's a first and 10 from the 14. 
inside the 20, which is why we get to come in, and that's going to be a full start. That's going to move it back to be a first and 15 from the 19. And they'll give it to their back anyway, who goes to the outside, has some solid blocking, and he is gone. We get to jump back in with a minute and eight seconds to go here in the half down, 21 to 10. So they got a touchdown again in simulation. We're going to go deep here on the first play of the strike because why not as we find Dominique Speed, but he can't hold on to it. That leads to a second and 10. We'll drop back to pass and take the quick throw over the middle, caught by Hart, and that'll be a nine-yard play. Third and one with the clock still running. Snyder will drop back to pass and we'll go to the tight end, and that one will not be caught. Fourth and one. And you know what? Down by 11. Let's just go for it. Let's just be super aggressive. Why not? On a fourth and one situation with 42 seconds to go in the half. If we don't get this, that is not going to be good for the rest of this game. But it's a toss to the outside caught by Turner for the first down. There is a flag, though. Is this coming back? Did I really convert that just for you to hold on the play? I believe I did. Awesome. We now jump into the third quarter where we face a third and five to keep the drive moving. We're going to go deep downfield for it, and it is caught by Hart all the way down to the 18. The next play, we would get a 10-yard pass to Dylan Turner, so now it's a second and inches from the eight-yard line. Handoff up the middle, and Turner's got the first down, but he got leveled at about the five-yard line. This play worked on them earlier. Let's see if it works again. The speed option to the outside. Get that toss out to Turner, who will walk into the end zone, and we have a one-score game. And then we finally get to jump back in here in the fourth quarter. They face a third and long. Can we get them off the field? It's a screen to the outside. Please get off your block. Down the sideline. He will not get the first down. Fourth and two. They would then make the field goal in simulation. So it became 24 to 18. Apparently we went for two earlier. I didn't even notice that. But now a first and goal from the two. And we will walk into the end zone with Dylan Turner and take the lead. The Bearcats now have a first and goal, though, with four minutes to play. From the four-yard line, it's a handoff to the back, and he's going to get met and brought down for no gain. Now on the next play, it's a second and goal. They come out in shotgun again. I believe that's the backup running back in the game now. And a quick throw to the end zone, a wide-open man touchdown, Sam Houston. It now lets us come into the game on a second and 13, which is a really weird spot to jump in, but whatever, from the 22-yard line. Under four minutes to play, we'll take the snap and a quick throw to speed. He's got the first down, brought down to the 37. With 2.20 to play, we do have all three timeouts. Snyder will drop back to pass, looking to go downfield. We are going to lob this one. That'll be caught by Hart for the first down into Sam Houston territory, but that should take us down to the two-minute warning. We'll come out in a shotgun set again. He'll drop back and look to pass. We're going to go to the tight end over the middle, who will not make the catch. That brings up a second and 10. Snyder will drop back and look to pass. We're going to try to throw this one downfield. That will be caught by Bo McKnight, but knocked out of his hands. That would bring up a third and ten. Snyder will drop back to pass again. We're going to try to throw to the tight end on the outside, who will make the catch around the diving defender and get the first down. I'm not going to lie, I feel like that was an incredibly risky throw, but now first and ten from the 35. We'll drop back to pass again and throw this one underneath, and that was going to miss everybody, but there is a flag, and I think this one's going to be on Sam Houston. It would be a defensive pass interference, which moves us up to the 28-yard line with a first and 10. Snyder will drop back, and we're going to try to go to the tight end again, but he got caught up on his guy, and it gets intercepted. And, oh my god, we forced a fumble. All right, that is a massive... Who hit that? Was that Colt Snyder? Was that our quarterback? I am all for people making big plays, and I'm really glad he kept us in this game. But let's try not to Jason Street ourselves here. But it keeps our hopes alive in this. A minute 28 to go from the 35-yard line. Snyder will drop back to pass. And we're going to take this throw to the running back. Never mind. A minute 25 to go with a second and 10. He'll drop back and look to pass again. Throw this one underneath. And once again, hit as we are throwing. That's going to set up a third and 10. We kind of need to go downfield here. So we'll see if we can actually do anything. Out of shotgun, Snyder will drop back. And we're going to try to lob this. Can we make the catch? No, he just misses him. Fourth and 10. With a minute 18 to go, Snyder back in a five-wide set. We'll drop back to pass, go to the tight end over the middle, who can't make the catch anyway, obviously would not have had the first down. That is going to be a uh, turnover on downs. However, we can still get the ball back. They would get a loss of one on the first play. We would burn our first timeout, so now it's a second and 11 with a minute eight to play here in the game. They're going back to the running back again, to the outside, who's got the first down, and deep into Edmund State territory. That is going to wrap this game up.
Well, we had a chance to win this game. I threw an interception. We were handed another chance to win the game, and I could not get any more yards after that. So we fall to, I believe, 3-7 and seven on the year. We do manage to level up our coach, though, so I think this time I'm going to go ahead and do the most influential on linebackers and defensive line because I feel like that's probably the biggest thing on defense that we're going to need. And there is the commitment we were waiting for. Three-star left tackle Oscar Almaldivar has finally committed along with three-star running back Skylar Lewis. Oh, this one's actually a surprise. We get three-star receiver Lyle Shermer. I didn't even realize he was that close to committing. We have now landed several three-stars so far here in our very first season. And the ones I'm more excited for are like quarterback Matt Eberle and then wide receiver Lyle Shermer. The main reason I'm excited to get him is because he is going to come in with 94 speed. And then I also have Max Evanson coming in with 93 speed. I should really be able to revamp our offense next season as long as these guys are good enough to play in their very first year. We are now officially out of bowl contention, which does really, really suck. But honestly, how many of you guys expected us to get to a bowl game here in the first year? But our next opponent is against the 8-2 Florida International Panthers. Oh, well, this is fun. Our very first scenario of the day is a third and nine here in the first quarter to try to keep the drive alive. Game is still 0-0, and that is going to be intercepted. I thought I could fit that into the receiver, but I am still pretty bad at throwing in this game. But Florida International now faces a third and 17 on their next drive. We are going to bring a blitz, and he's going to go over the middle, find his man, and that is going to be a touchdown. The blitz definitely backfired that time. From there, they would get the ball right back somehow and end up all the way down at our eight yard line, facing a second and eight. It'll be a handoff to the back who goes up the middle and he jukes at our defender and walks into the end zone. So it is quickly 14 nothing. Guys, I don't think we're gonna see much of this game. This was the next scenario it gave me. A two minute drill here. We're down 24 nothing. It's not even letting me jump in on defense anymore. And now we're gonna get hit as we're throwing to go to a second and 10. With a shotgun set, Snyder will drop back to pass. And we're going to dump this one off to Walker, who will make the catch and set up a third and one. I was waiting to see if he actually held on to that through contact. Snyder back in a shotgun set again. We'll drop back to the pass and a quick throw to the outside. And we'll convert this third and one all the way to the 48. A massive play, obviously. A minute 20 to go here in the half now. Out of a shotgun set again. And we're going to try to go deep downfield. That's getting picked off, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. That safety was just waiting for it. And we force him out near the 50. Well, I just simulated to the end of the game, and apparently the second half, we played a bit better, but we still lose this one 34 to 20. I really thought it was going to be ugly, so I didn't even want to see what happened in the second half, so I jumped right to the end. We tried to make a comeback, obviously does not, does not pan out for us, though. We do manage to land a two-star middle linebacker and George Incognito following that game, though. He's one of the guys I feel like I've been scouting for a long time, and he has finally decided to come here. Well, I will keep him on our board for now, but it does not look like we're going to get to keep Elijah Bulla on our board for very long because North Carolina State has discovered him. And uh, yeah, they have a pretty big lead over us considering their pipeline tier is a lot higher than what we get. The rest of these guys, though, as of right now, we are leading. Well, except for Carl Wicks, but I really just added him to the board, I believe, last week. But now we finally have our last game of Season 1 as we take on the 7-4 Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And following this game, we can finally get some help to this team. Well, this is not a good start. It looks like this is only the second play of the game. They are already in our red zone with a decent run that's going to set them up at a second and two from the six-yard line. So now they'll come back out in shotgun again. The scoreboard's going to disappear. And a quick throw to the outside will be intercepted by Jones. Why not? Let's try to bring this one out. We make that man miss. Now Jones down the sideline. We'll try to spin out some of these guys and get all the way to the 26-yard line. Well, I'm at least excited that we got that play to happen. We get to jump in later into the first quarter. Apparently, we would not take advantage of the turnover. They would get the ball back, and they are up 7-0. So let's see if we can convert this third down to keep this drive moving. Caught by Hart. He is leveled to set up a fourth and two. Now, will they let us go for this? Absolutely. So we're going to jump right back in and try to convert on this play. And I honestly don't really want to throw the ball. I would rather give this one to our running back. So Troy Walker in the backfield we will get the first down, but there is a flag. Do not tell me. Oh my God, it's going to be holding again. Yeah, not a shocker here. We will be punting this ball away. So let's see if we can at least pin them deep downfield because nothing else seems to be happening in this game. We are going to go for a backspin and Hooks makes the catch at the 10. Our next scenario, we have the ball at the 30-yard line of Louisiana Tech. Troy Walker is still in the game. Not real sure what happened to Dylan Turner, but Walker is not going to get the first down. That is why Dylan Turner is our starter. We are going to go for this on fourth and two. 
If one of you holds, I may cut you during the offseason. So on fourth and two, we are going to pitch this to the outside, caught by Walker, and we're not going to get the first down. But our defense is really, really trying to help us out today. We get the ball back at the 11-yard line with a first and 10. We'll come out of a five-wide set, and that one's going to be incomplete. Now on a second and 10. Snyder will drop back to pass again. We're going to dump this one off to Walker, and that bounces right off of his hands. Are you kidding me? Look, I know this team is not good, but this is ridiculous right now. On third and 10, we'll drop back, and we are going to force this one to the end zone. Why not? We're going to throw a pick because we can, I guess. All right. At this point, would it be just better for me to just let the offense, like, actually simulate this game? Because we once again have driven down inside the 20. Now from the 12-yard line, we'll give this one to Walker. And Walker will fight his way all the way down to the 2-yard line. First and goal. I still don't know what happened to our actual running back in Dylan Turner, though. I am going to run this speed option, despite the fact I already ran it earlier in this game. I don't really care. From inside the 2, there's going to be the toss out to Walker. And we will finally find the end zone. Of course, as soon as we finally score, they get back in scoring position. A first and 10 from the 11, and this is going to be a jet toss. I tried to get to the outside to read it. It did not work, and they will walk in. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech. We do get to come in on a third and six at the 39-yard line, though. Snyder will drop back, and we're going to try to launch this one downfield. Can McKnight make that catch? No, he can't. We get to come back out for a two-minute drill this time. A minute, 27 to go here in the half. And can we get rid of that? Yes, we will, and Hart will actually hold on to it. That moves us all the way up to the 44-yard line. Snyder back in shotgun. We'll drop back to pass. And we're going to throw this one to the outside. Can he get there in time? Yes, catch is made by Dominique Speed, who will get all the way down to the 34. Back in a shotgun set again. We'll drop back and look to pass. We're going to launch this one deep downfield, and that one's going to be caught by Hart, and he is diving into the end zone. Touchdown, Edmund State. We get a big jump here into the game now. It is 21-21. This was the first scenario I have gotten since that two-minute drill, and it's a punt return to set up decent field position with 2.38 to go. To try and end this season with a victory, can we get at least into field goal range? Out of a shotgun set, we'll go to Walker, who's going to go up the middle, and that's a gain of five. Near the two-minute warning now. Out of a shotgun set again, we'll go back to Walker off the RPO, and that one's going to set up a third and short for us. So now we need to, need to see if we can hit a quick pass to keep this drive moving. Or if Speed wants to come open on this post route, I will gladly take that too. But we're just going to take the easy throw for the first down, and Hart holds on to it. From the 49-yard line, we're going to go back to Walker again, who goes up the middle for absolutely nothing. Now with a minute 35 to play, Snyder will come out and will look to pass. We'll throw this one to the outside, caught by Walker, and he's once again, well, at least he got a yard this time, a third and nine. I was going to say once again he got nothing. A minute 30 to play. Snyder back in shotgun. We'll drop back to pass. And we're going to try to go downfield, but hit as we are throwing. Leads away fourth and nine. And we will have to punt this ball away and counter our defense to not allow them into field goal range. And I feel like that's a big ask there as it goes away and it should go back for a touchback. Right now would be the best time ever for a pick six defense. From the 20, they come out in shotgun. They'll take the snap and it's going to be a play fake. He's dropping back looking to go deep downfield. And he's got all the time in the world. Finally lets this one go. And that one's going to be intercepted by Donatello Streeter, who's apparently coming back from injury but makes a massive play. So our offense and Colt Snyder have another chance to try to get this win here. A minute 10 remaining. We'll drop back. We're going deep on the first play of the drive because why not? He finds Hart, who's off to the races, and he is gone. Touchdown, Edmund State. Now Louisiana Tech needs a touchdown in this game with one minute remaining exactly. He'll drop back to the pass under pressure, hit as he's throwing, but finds his man for the first down who will break that tackle into ESU territory and finally caught. He would get all the way to the 41-yard line and then they would burn their first timeout with 51 seconds remaining. They are going to bring this, and I accidentally took this guy out of coverage, but we managed to make up for it and they get a five-yard play. Now running that no-huddle offense. The scoreboard is gone, though, so I cannot tell you how much time is left right now. There it is. He'll drop back to pass. Roll to the outside, and now dump this off underneath. Caught by number three, who gets brought down to the 30 as they burn that second timeout. From the 29-yard line, they're back in shotgun again. He'll take the snap, and we can't get off our guy. He's going to go downfield, find his man, who gets flipped down to the 10. But now they burn that last timeout. And are we going to have another overtime game in this season? 25 seconds to go. Someone please come up with a play here. He'll drop back to pass. 
He's going to throw this one to the end zone and find his man. Touchdown, Louisiana Tech, yet again. We have 19 seconds to try to get into field goal range. Can we do it? We're going to launch this downfield for Ty Mays. Can he win a jump ball? No, he cannot. Now we have 13 seconds. Snyder back in a five wide set this time. We'll drop back. And that's a risky throw, and luckily it's not intercepted. With nine seconds to go, Walker is in at running back. We are going to fake it to him to try to get someone to bite, but we get completely surrounded, and yeah, we're just going to take this into overtime. We would win the toss, so we're going to be on defense first. From the 25, he'll take the snap and head off to the running back. That's just going to be a gain of about four. Now that brings up a second and six. Back in a shotgun set again. We're going to bring Slade on a blitz this time, but it does not work. We got out of that lane, and he's going to walk into the end zone. They would make the extra point, so it is 28 to 25. Snyder comes out in a five wide set. And on the first play, we're going for the tie right now, and it's going to be caught by Ty Mays. Touchdown, ESU. But we're not going for the tie. We're going to win or lose this game right here. Going for two, a shotgun set. Walker is the running back. We get the toss out, but Walker will break that tackle and get into the end zone, and we convert on the two-point try and get our fourth win of the season. And I honestly just wanted to be super aggressive there at the end just to try to prove a point just to see if we could actually do it. But we get the win. We finish the year 4-8. and eight. Colt Snyder, you were really good. Stop gap quarterback for us. But next season should be a new era at quarterback for Edmond State. There is really not much of a recruiting update for you guys. We are leading most of these athletes here except for Bulla. As we already saw, he's being led by North Carolina State. But that is going to wrap up this episode. The next episode will be the entirety of the offseason as we try to add some more players to this team and we'll see exactly how well that goes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and I will talk to you next time.